Today, we're checking out this cool design and we're gonna have a look at how to code it into HTML and CSS. And we're also going to convert it into a proper website theme. This is a design that's been made on Adobe XD and there's a lot of moving parts here. We're gonna add some animation, we're gonna pull out different images and we're gonna take you through the whole coding experience of getting it up and running. Now, if you don't know who I am, I'm Adrian from Australia. I do videos around design and development. So if you like this kind of content and you wanna see more like it, hit like and subscribe and let's just jump right back into it. We're going to convert this website from Adobe XD into proper HTML and CSS that works for the mobile, the tablet, and the desktop. It's got a couple of different sections and the layout is essentially more or less a bootstrap like column design, but it's got some really nice big content sections here with some nice imagery and what looks like SVG images. We're gonna take a look at making sure that this design is accurately coded. And if you have a look, we've got a lot of different moving elements here. So we'll have a look at how we pull those out and put them into our design. We might even do a moving background here with maybe a video or something. So my name is Adrian. I do design and development videos. So if you like this kind of content and you wanna see more like it, hit like and subscribe and let's just jump right into it. The first thing we're gonna do is open up a blank document. Now in this document, the only thing I really have is bootstrap and a link to my styles file, which is over here. I'm using a .css file, but it's being compiled from SAS. And if you don't know how to do this, I've got a previous video on that, which I might link in the description below, but otherwise it just allows me to do nested CSS. With that, we're gonna get started and have a look at what's required to get this design up and running. Now let's open up our index.html file over here. And mostly we'll have a look at starting off with making this nice large big header. To start off, we'll create a section in here on our website. And for this section, we'll give it a class of home-header. And for this section, we're gonna have a look at making sure it's the correct height to start off with. We take a look at the height for this section. It's just about 1,081 pixels. So let's put that here into our design in our CSS. We'll copy over this class and we'll paste it here below. We'll do a height of 1,080 pixels and a background of gray. And let's open up our Chrome browser and have a look if that accurately gets made across. So here we go, we've got our design, but uh, it seems to be a little bit too big. Now, I think that's because we're zoomed in. So that's a little bit better, here it is. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you guys can see that. But essentially, um, let's move my head across a little bit there as well. Uh, here it is. Now, the first thing we'll need to do is add these three elements in. This is the phone, the, num uh, the logo, uh, and here we've got the location for their address. So if we have a look at the column design, this looks like it's utilizing the full 1080 pixels or so that you would normally have on a bootstrap design. So we could design this in columns and that should be just fine. So what we'll do is we'll do a container here with a row. And for this row, we'll do a column LG4 and in here, we'll add our very first thing, which is a logo of the phone and the call us section. So for the logo of the phone, we'll do an uh, I with a FA class for Font Awesome. And we'll do FA phone. And then after that, we'll also add in the content here for the phone number. Now let's save that and see if it carries across. So here it is up here. We don't have Font Awesome in our design here, so let's copy that across. To get that, we can go to Font Awesome and we'll use version four, which is free. And to do that, we'll simply copy over their CDN to make sure that they're up and running. So let's stick with version four here. Version five is paid, but we don't wanna use that. And in this case, they usually have a link here to a CDN. Um, not seeing one though, but uh, what I'll do is I'll just copy this across here into our header. And in here, I'll just look for Font Awesome for CDN. We'll 
grab the very first one here and let's copy over this path and replace it down here. So that should get it up and running for us. And with that done, we should be able to now, what's that, is that working? Just one second, let's have a look at this path. Uh, so here it is, we'll paste that in and refresh. And now I've got the logo here for our phone. Now there's no styling on this. It's extremely small. You guys probably can't even see that yet. But uh, what we'll have to do is we'll have to style this. If we take a look at the design here, uh, this one icon is uh, about 84 pixels in height. So what we'll do is we'll do an FA class in here. We'll do font size, 82 pixels. With that, we've got the nice big phone and I think this is a square. So let's put a square in there. And then the next line for this section is the contact information. So call us on this number. Now let's put this into a separate section called phone. And for this phone section here, we'll make this a color of white and we'll make it a font size of 24. If we save that and have a look at our design, there it is. So that's looking a little bit better. And the FA also needs to be white. So we'll actually move the white color one class above. Finally, this looks like it's all centered. So we'll do a text align off center as well. So that's looking a lot better now. Um, the next thing we'll need to do is pull out some of these elements that we'll be using in our design. Now, the first one is the logo. So to pull that out of Adobe XD, we'll simply run export selected. Uh, we'll do a SVG in this case, and we'll pull this out into our folder path, which is just over here. Let's export that and let's export some of these other items as well. We've got a nice big image here and let's export this over to that folder as well. Uh, file export selected. This one will be a PNG because we need a transparent background for that. And finally, let's export this background image too, which is over here. We'll just click file export selected. And this one will be a JPG. Uh, with all of these done, we should start being able to use these in our document. So if we have a look here, we've got them all exported. The first thing we can do is for the background. Right now we've got a background of gray. So let's do a background image URL and let's pull in the uh, JPG from StockSnap. Uh, so here it is and let's put that in here. So that's applied and we'll add a couple of extra syntax in here just so it's positioned properly. We'll do a background size of cover our background position of center center. Great. So that's looking a little bit better now. Uh, the next thing we can do is having a look at pulling in the logo. So to do that, what we'll have is another column in here. So let's just close this here and expand out another one. Call LG four, so a four column design. And in here, we'll just add the logo. So the logo is currently an SVG. So let's copy the syntax for that here and paste this in with an image tag. So here it is. Uh, that's looking okay. We'll add an old tag here called hollow beach bar logo. And for the width, we'll do 100% because we wanted to utilize the full column there. So that should be more or less it. And finally, we'll have one more column here and that'll be for their location. So we can copy the syntax we used for the phone number previously. In this case, we'll just do a map. And for the map, we'll have the address here, which is this section here. And that should be more or less it. So if we take a look at that, uh, our design's done now. But uh, if we have a look at our positioning, they're sort of all aligned to the top. So here we actually have them aligned to the bottom. In order to fix that, we're going to have to put an attribute here on the row. So we'll put in here align items end. that'll bring them just down here. So they're nicely aligned at the bottom of this row. So that's looking a little bit better. And finally, we'll probably want to add a little bit of padding there at the top. 
we take a look at the design and how much padding there is up there, it's about 73 pixels. So I'll just even that out at about 70. So let's do padding top 70 pixels. If we apply that and save that, we can see that we've got our design starting to take shape there and looking a little bit better. Now, the other thing that we can have here is some line breaks on the phone number and the address. So let's put that in here as a couple of spans. So I'll put a span in here for the phone number and a span in here for the suburb. And what we can do in here is make a span that we can do as a display block. And this later on we can change for responsive design, but the, for the time being this should take shape. And here we can see that those have taken effect. Now the next thing we'll want to do is have a look at the font they're using for all the stuff here. So if you have a look at this font, it's actually Poppins for the headers, uh, for the content, all of it is Poppins. So the first thing I want to do is jump in here to Google Fonts and we'll just jump onto their website and have a look if this is a free font that we can just pull in. So if we go here and paste it in, we can see it is actually there. And if we have a look at the styling, we're using some bold versions, some light versions. So we'll just add these in. So we'll do light, medium, semi-bold, bold, and maybe extra light. Let's copy this syntax into our header so that we can start making use of these. And let's copy over this syntax and paste this into our body. So we'll create a new body class here and paste it in. So now if we have a look at our design, we can see that it's using that font family from Google Fonts, which is good. The next thing we'll need to do is create this nice long big tag here. And we'll do this as a nice big tagline on the section here below these columns. So what we'll do is we'll create a new row. And for this new row, we'll add a full 12 column sized. Oh, we don't actually even need a row, to be honest. We could just put a title in here. And for this title, we can add some styling. So let's go over here and add a title class. And for this title class, let's do something like uh, font size. Now let's see how large that was. In our design here, that's 60 pixels with extra light weight. So let's put the same things here. We'll do 60 pixels with font weight being light. Now light is also maybe like a 300 or a 200. Uh, so maybe we'll use 200. That seems to look very similar to the design here. We also have a bit of letter spacing happening. Now, if we have a look at our design, that seems about accurate anyway. So I think I'll just leave it as is. And finally, we've got a little bit of padding at the top and at the bottom there. So for the top, we've got about, let's see, 40, 80, 80 pixels from the top. So that's consistent with the design we had here with about 70 pixels. So let's put that in here so it's all consistent. And finally, we just need this long, large image here at the bottom. Now to do that, I might actually have a look at creating that in this section below outside of any container. Um, but actually, maybe we will, we'll, we might just put it here as a large image. Now this section here, the image is a PNG. So it's this one over here. Let's copy this file path. And let's put this in here. And let's put a width of 100%. Let's take a look at our design, see what that looks like. So right now, I think I've got the wrong thing here. I've actually pulled in the logo. And what we wanted to pull in was the other one here, which is component five. We can rename that a little bit later, but for the time being, let's just paste that in. So that's the image there. Uh, now, because the size of this home header is a little bit too large, I'm gonna remove this height and it should just automatically size now. So that's looking a little bit better, but we need some padding there underneath as well. So for the title, let's also add a padding bottom of 70 pixels, and that should be consistent with what we've got on the top. It also looks like this image down here isn't making its way all the way to the bottom. There seems to be a one pixel gap there, I think. I'm not sure if I'm seeing that right, but uh, there is a little bit of a gap there. 
So what we'll do is we'll actually offset this image by one pixel. So let's do this as image holder. And in this image holder, let's pass this class down here to a margin bottom of negative one pixel. If we apply that, and that doesn't seem to have taken effect, maybe we'll put it on the image itself. So there we go, that, that's looking a little bit better now. So now it's making its way all the way down to the bottom. But it looks like there's also a uh, pixel gap here of about, how many pixels is this? Can't really tell. It looks like it might be about 20 pixels in height. So let's also do a border bottom here. Uh, so what we might do is border bottom 20 pixels solid white. So we're putting this on our home header. And for the time being, we might not be able to see this, but what we'll do here is we'll do a border bottom of maybe 19 pixels neg in the negative. And that way, this is more or less aligning with the bottom of our image here. So that's looking a little bit better. Um, we can fix that up a little bit later if we need to for a sponsor design, but that's close enough to get us up and running. We also have this small scroll section here with a little icon. So we're going to have to export that out as well so that we can put this into our design. So I'm just going to click a file, export selected and save this as a PNG and we'll put this into our directory. In our directory here, we'll import it and we'll paste it here. Uh, we'll do image and for this image, we'll have a look. I think this is just called group 15. Uh, so let's copy this across and paste it in here. Now for this alt tag, we'll just call this scroll item. And for the other one, we'll call this hello beach bar preview. Now for this scroll, it's not working very well because it's breaking the uh, barrier there because it's not being overlaid on our other image. So to fix that, we'll need to do an overlay image. And we'll do an absolute position for that. So let's do overlay image here. And with this class, we'll pass it in here below. What we'll want to do, first of all, is we'll want to remove the margin that we're setting. Next, we'll want to make a position of absolute. And to do that, we'll also need a position of relative for the element above. Next, we'll want to do a top of 50% and a left of 50%. And then we'll also want to do a translate, uh, transform, sorry, of uh, translate X and Y. And here we'll do negative 50% and negative 50%. So that should put it just about center of where we want it, but it's still not in the right spot. We want it to be a little bit lower. So to put it lower, we'll maybe do it 75% from the top and a negative 75% uh, 25% from the bottom. So that looks like it's in a better position. If we take a look at our design here, it's a little bit lower. So we maybe do something like eight, 20, 80. So let's fix that up and have a look at our design. So that's looking a lot better. Uh, that logo could be a little bit bigger as well. So we could use the two X version. So let's go here to end at two X. And then we can make this size a little bit smaller, such as a width of maybe 50, 100, 200. Yeah, 200 is about right, maybe 220. Uh, if we take a look, yeah, about 200. I think that should do. So that's looking a lot better. I think we can start having a look at the next section now. And from that, we can have a look what else we need to do to get that section up and running. Uh, now, for this section here, it's got a couple of bits of information such as social, drinks, food and sunset uh, with a dark sea looking like color and some extra text with these two borders. So what we'll do is let's have a look at the height first of all. So the height for this section is about 500 to 600 pixels. So let's collapse this section here and we'll create a new section. And this section here we'll call home dash info. And for the home dash info class, let's add it in here. And we'll do the height here. And what was that again? 
565. And let's do a background of gray just so we can see it for the time being. Oh, let's see. So here it is. Let's start by making sure we've got that background. So this background here, here it is. Uh, I'm going to export this whole element. And that way we should be able to use it straight in our design. So if we have a look at this element here, uh, it should be popping up here as water background. Um, I seem to have offset it. So let's fix that up to start off with. There we go. Let's save that one more time. And replace the existing one. So that's done. And in our dock here, here it is. Let's copy over this water background and in our styles.css, we'll do background image URL and pass it in. We'll also copy over the styling for our backgrounds, so a size cover and position center. And we'll also want the color for the text here to be white. So that's the baseline done. Uh, next, we can have a look at the content. So we've got this section here with a couple of icons and large text. Now, this looks like there are four columns here with this icon in between. And then we've got this dotted line below. So we could probably do this as a simple column design in Bootstrap without much worry. So let's do that. Here we'll do container row. Uh, call LG3 and for the first item it's a social so let's copy that in here and let's have a look at our design so it needs some padding from the top if we have a look at the padding here from the top it's about 50 pixels so let's put that in here padding top 50 pixels and let's do padding bottom 50 pixels then for this, we'll call this uh, call to action title. Put social in here and let's add this class in here on the home info section. And this is a font size of 36 with a font weight of bold. So font size 36 pixels, font weight bold. It's also all in uppercase from what I can see. So let's put that in as well. Uh, text transform uppercase. Great. So that's in there now. Uh, it also looks like all these items are centered. So let's do text align center for the top element here. Great. So that's looking a little bit better. Um, now we can copy over this column a couple of times over. And for each one of these, we want drinks and we also want food. And finally, we also want sunset. So that's looking good. Uh, let's refresh that. The only other thing here we need is the icon. Uh, not sure yet how we can put that in. Let's export it for the time being. Yeah, we'll just go in here, export, selected, and do this as a PNG because it needs a transparent background. So this one in here, let's have a look what it's called. Um, I think it's one of these elements. Here it is. So this is group seven, and this is in between each column. So let's import it as an image to start off with to see what it looks like. Uh, let's do image in here, pass it in, give it an old tag of spacer and have a look what that looks like in our design. So there it is, but um, might not work with a container with columns in here. We might have to change this in terms of how it's designed because right now it looks like with that, it's just not going to fit in properly. Now, the first thing we could do is we could offset them as absolute positions, or we could remove all these columns and create something like a flexbox design where it automatically updates depending on where it is. 
So I'm thinking maybe let's try a Flexbox design and see how that goes. To do that, we're going to remove most of this content here. So for the time being, I'll leave it, but I'll create a new section here called call to action. And in here, I'll add all the items. Uh, and so in here, let's just start off with item and we'll do social. Uh, let's do one for drinks, food, and uh, what was the last one here? Sunset. Let's just copy this in sunset. Food. Drinks. Great. So those are in there now. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll start styling this. Uh, for the call to action, we'll do display flex. And then for the items, we'll do flex is one. We'll make sure that this is inside a container. So let's move this inside the pre-existing container we created so that the width is accurately spaced out. And finally, we'll also want to make sure that all these items have the current correct font size and height. So that's looking a little bit better now. Um, now next up, what we'll want to do is create those icons in between. So in this case, we'll do icon here and let's paste in the image we had previously, uh, which I believe it was this one here. Let's copy that across and call this spacer. So now what we can do is we can copy over this icon a couple of times here, here, and here. So now we've got that design happening and we can remove this old row that we had previously with Bootstrap. Great, so that looks good. I'm happy with that. Uh, if we have a look here, yep, that's all looking really good. Now when we resize this, we can then have a look at maybe doing something like uh, responsive design. Uh, and also these icons here are a little bit bigger um, in our actual design. So we might not use the 2X version. We might use just the 1X version. And finally, on top of that, they're not aligned centered. So what we might want to do on here to make sure they're aligned properly is just do align dash items and do that as center. So that's looking a lot better now. Uh, we can have a look at the next part for the design, which is adding this spacer with some dotted white um, dots here at the bottom. So let's see the offset for this. This is about 50 pixels and then 80 pixels. So this one's pretty easy to do. We'll just add a line here at the bottom and we can literally call it line. So we'll do it inside of our container. And here we'll call it a spacer maybe. And then for the spacer, let's add the class in here to a height of one pixel, a border top of one pixel solid white. Now we want that actually to be dotted. So we'll do dotted and maybe we'll do two pixels. Uh, let's double check our design. So actually that might be dashed. So let's try it dashed. So that's looking a little bit better. Uh, then we'll just add in the padding. So in this case, we're using a spacer. So we'll use margin, margin top 50 pixels and margin bottom, maybe 80 pixels. So that's looking a little bit better. Uh, next up is this title here that says a little something for everyone, which has a font size of 48 pixels and it's got a color variable in there. So let's put this in here and we'll do this as a H2 tag. In here, let's put in the text and let's have a look at our design. So for this H2 tag, we'll do font size, 48 pixels, font weight, maybe 200, I think it was. Yep, that seems about right. And let's pull this color attribute over and paste it into our design. So that's done, that was easy. Uh, and then we've got some content here. So we can put this in a P tag. It's font size 18, color white. Pretty simple stuff. So let's do a P tag in here and a P tag in here. Paste this in, font size 18 pixels. Now we might do that font size 18 pixels on the body because I think that'll be the minimum font size we'll be using. 
And let's check to make sure that's not bold or anything. So it's a light color, uh, which is just the default, but it's looking fine as it is. So that's more or less done. The only other thing we need is to add some margins at the top and bottom of that. So let's do a margin top of 50 pixels and a margin bottom of 50 pixels. And finally, we're done with this design. We just have a little menu that we can click as a button down here, but we'll add this into our next section and have a look at how to make sure that design of that overlaps in between the sections. Let's create a little bit more room of padding for our website there so you guys can see it a little bit more. We'll do padding bottom, uh, maybe something like 500 pixels, uh, maybe something 1200. That looks a little bit better. And with that, uh, let's see if we can add that button design in below. So here we have a big section with a background image. So let's export that as well. Uh, let's export it here as a JPG. So that's nice and small. And that should pop up here in our design and we'll create a new section for that. We'll call it, what should we call this section here? Um, function. So we'll do home dash function. There we go. And let's just add this into our CSS here below. Uh, let's do home dash function. And for this section here, let's do a background and we'll copy over the settings we had for the section above. So let's remove the height on this one and copy everything else across. And for this one here, we want the background to be the sand. So let's copy this text here and paste it in. And we'll add a default height here of about 800 pixels to start off with. So let's see, let's take an effect there. And what we can do now is we can have a look at adding this button design. So this button design has nice big fonts, icons and other stuff. And it's got a nice border on it as well, but it's centered right in the middle here. So to do that, we're going to have to use some absolute positioning, maybe some negative margins, but let's see how we can design that. So let's add it here at the very top and let's call a container in here so that it's uh, centered. And then let's call this button here. So it's, it's almost utilizing the full container width, but it's got a little bit of margin here on the left and the right. Uh, its height is about 125 pixels and it's got a color in here, which we can pull out in a second. So let's just add big button here as our class name. And for this, let's add this class in here below. And let's grab the background color here, which is this 27 blue color. Uh, and just add it here and make sure it's a color of white. Now this will most likely be an A tag. So let's make this an A tag in the settings here. And we'll provide no link at the start. So just a hash. And let's copy over the text to start off with as well. So if we take a look, here's our button. Um, it doesn't look exactly the same as our design and that's because we're gonna have to style it now. So to start off with, let's do a font size of 48 pixels. Uh, and let's have a look at the padding here. So that's a quite a lot of padding. It's about almost a whole EM's worth, which is about the same size as the font. So let's do font size, sorry, let's do padding one EM. Uh, so that's looking okay. It might be a little much, so we'll do 7.5 and 1.5. So that's looking a little bit better. We've got a little bit of a border curve there. So we'll do a border radius of maybe 0 0.25 EM. If we apply that, looks like it's not enough. So we'll do 0 0.5 and that's just about enough. So finally, we need a border of one pixel solid white and see if that's about right for the outline. Probably not. Um, this is probably actually about, what, 10 pixels. All right, well, let's put 10 pixels in. And there we go. So now we've got our big button there, but obviously it's not in between the different container sections there. So previously we created the spacer here, but for the other side section, we actually had a border top for that 
bit. So we'll do a border top here as well, 10 pixels solid white. And let's apply that and make sure it works. And let's refresh here. So that doesn't seem to have taken effect. Uh, this is for the function section. Uh, not sure why it's not taking effect here. Let's make sure that everything's working properly. So it looks like everything is working properly. Let's do a display of block for this element here. And let's remove the height. So the height's fine. Background color we don't need. Uh, border top, ah, here we go. We've got a typo here. So we'll do 10 pixels, not 10 X. So now we have that working. Now let's remove the padding top here. And now to make this centered, we'll do a transform. Let's do a transform of a, let's see, a uh, translate X, sorry, translate Y. Let's do 100%. So that's moved it above, but that's too much. So we'll do 50% and that's completely centered it. So that's what we're after, but obviously there's not enough padding here for this section. So what we're going to have to do is for this section above, we're going to have to add extra padding at the bottom. So I'll just do 150 pixels and that should be more or less enough. Let's double check our design. Yep. So that looks good. Um, pretty happy with that might be a little bit too much. So even a hundred pixels will probably do in this case. And finally, we'll change this to a display inline block because as a block itself, it's expanding out all the way in terms of width and we don't want that. So there we go, we've got an inline block and now that's working really well. All we really need to do now is just add icons to the left and the right and that's pretty easy to do. So to add our first icon, what we'll do is we'll go to this button here and we'll add a I tag with an FA FA dash uh, home just to test that it's working. So here we've got a home icon. And what we want to do is we don't want to grab this food icon. So to do that, we're going to have to look up what that is. So we'll go to font awesome for and we'll go to the icon section. And here we'll type in food. And this is actually called cutlery. So let's copy over this tag. And let's paste it here into our code. There it is. Now it's, I think a little bit bigger in the design and it's got a little bit of a margin there. So to apply that, let's just put in an FA dash home here. Let's do margin right is maybe 15 pixels. Oh, sorry, FA cutlery. So margin right is 15 pixels. Uh, maybe even 30 pixels. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better. Uh, instead, let's do one EM or half an EM just so that it's responsive when we change the font size later. Uh, and then we've got another icon here on the right. Uh, I'm not too sure what that one is. Let's see if we can change the font awesome package there because that one doesn't seem to be the correct one. Uh, let's have a look over here. Sometimes people use different font packages. So this looks like an Adobe link. Uh, let's have a look what that would be called. So let's go back here, type in Adobe, maybe PDF. Uh, yeah, so that's file dash PDF dash O. So we'll put this into our design here and we'll put this on the right section of the menu, sorry, of the button. So PDF dash O and file, there we go. And for this one here, we'll do a margin of left this time and we'll just do 0 0.5 EM as well. Great, so there's our button. Um, doesn't really have any animation. Uh, let's add some animations for the hover. So we'll do and hover and let's do a background and currently the background is this color here. But what we might do is darken it. So let's add it in here and let's darken it by maybe 15%. And the other thing we might wanna do is do a transition of maybe ease. 
0 0.25 seconds on all changes. So here we've got our thing. It's also underlining. I don't want it to do that. So let's do text decoration as none. And maybe we can also make it come out of the page a little bit. So to do that, we would do transform scale and let's do a scale of maybe something like 1.015 or 25 there we go so that's looking good we still need to have our translate there so let's put that in and that's looking good for a hover effect i'm happy with that so we're halfway through making our design now uh, we've only got a little bit left so let's have a look at what's next here so we've got this section here about hosting a function and a lot of this should be easy enough to do. There's a, a section here with an image and it's similar to the header that we created earlier. So let's just start making these sections. This is a nice H2 tag. So let's start off by making that. We'll add this in under our container and let's make this as a H2 tag. Great. That is a font size of 48 with that light color that we had previously. So what we might do is in the section here when we created a H2 tag last time, let's copy that out and put this on a higher level. That way when we use the H2 tag now, it'll have the same design, which seems to have worked already. Next, we can take a look at these P tags here. Now, these are some bold, some not. I think of this one here to start off with is 24 size in font and this one here is 18. So let's copy this whole section to start off with. And here in our HTML, let's scroll down and add these in. So I'm gonna just add these all in first and then here I'm gonna do something different. This will be called tagline. And in here I'll add the very first item. So that's this one here. And the very last one can be another tagline, which is, can we help? Great. Now we've got a couple of other lines here. So we'll add these all as individual P tags. So this one can be under a P tag. Let's finish this one off here. And let's make sure that they're all designed properly. Two, three. Let's copy this one over here in the middle. And finally, this last one here as the last P tag. Great, and we can remove this now. So that's looking a little bit better. Let's see how that looks like in our design. So here it is. Now for the styling here, we can do tagline and we can do font size 24 pixels for that. We can do a font weight of bold. And finally, in this section here, this first bit of a line is bolded as well. So we can actually add those in as well. So let's have a look at that. We'll jump in here and it starts off with beer question mark and that's where the bolding ends. So let's copy that across. So what we can do is just use the strong tag and paste this in. Use the strong tag here as well and use the strong tag here too. And this will make those sections bold without adding any additional CSS. So if we see, we can see that's taken effect already. Let's have a look at the line height and the padding. So there's a little bit of padding here at the very first tagline, which is about mm, 50 pixels more or less. And then there is a little bit of padding here at the bottom of about 80 pixels. So what we'll do is here for the first tagline, let's add a little bit of padding to the top let's call maybe under the h2 tag we'll do uh, margin bottom 50 pixels and then later on when we do the image we'll add some margin at the top here so if we refresh that we can see now that follows a lot more closely to the design we have so that section is more or less done now now we can just add the image now so let's export this image as is and we might use the same syntax we use in our header. So let's pull that across and copy it in. So here we've got this section for the image holder and let's copy this whole section here below. 
And this was in a container last time, so let's make sure that we do the same again. So down here, let's put that in here, apply that and have a look at our design. So there it is. Um, we're gonna have to add in the class as well. So this is the class that we had previously. Uh, we might just copy this out and paste it at a root level just to see if that fixes it up. And we also have a bit of a negative margin happening there. And I think that's not a negative margin, it's a fixed height that we created. So let's remove that fixed height and that should fix that issue up. So that's looking a little bit better now. Um, and finally, uh, this is making its way all the way to the bottom, whereas here we've got a bit of a padding at the bottom. So we'll have to remove that for the function section, which is just over here at padding bottom. So that's almost done. Lastly, for the image tag there, we need to add some margin at the top. So let's copy over this class here and paste it below. And what we'll do is a margin top of about 80 pixels. So that's all done now. If we take a look at our design, here it is. And if we have a look at our content, it's pretty much on point. So that's looking good. The only thing we have to do now is change this image here. So we can export the one that we have set here and just export this as a PNG. If we have a look now, we should be able to find this here in our docs. Let's have a look. And this one has a sunset on the right. So let's find that one, uh, which is this one here. So let's copy the thing here, which is component six and paste this into our HTML and replace component five. With that done, we've got this section now complete and we're on to the footer, which we're almost done now. So for the footer, we've got this 10 pixel white border top, a nice strong white uh, blue color here and a contact form with some social media. So let's copy that across and start designing that. So let's add a footer section in here. We'll do footer. And for this footer section, let's do a ID of footer as well. Let's put an ID here in our CSS. And for this, let's do a background color. And we'll paste this here below. Uh, border top of 10 pixels solid white and maybe a height of 500 pixels to start off with. So that's that there. Uh, we might need a slightly bigger border because this image isn't working very well for us, but that's because of the margin. So we'll need to fix up the margin maybe a little bit. Um, but for the time being, what I might do is I just might make a bigger border. So we'll do 20 pixels for the time being for this one. Uh, next up, what we want to do is we'll want to have a look at adding the content for this footer. So this has a H2 tag here, which has a, this looks like a H3 tag because it's 36. Whereas these ones here, they were 48. So we'll do a H3 tag here and this will be for the contact form. So let's do container and then H3. Did you want to mod? no more and this will be inside a strong tag. Now for this H3 tag, we'll do a color of white. We'll pull this white color above to the root level. We'll also make sure this has a font size of 36 pixels. And this section here has a font of extra light. So we'll do font weight 200. Let's have a look at our design there. So that looks okay. We'll have to text align everything center again. And we'll need to add some padding. So the padding in this section here has a little bit more than usual. I think that's about 80 again. So let's do padding top here with 80 pixels. Apply that. So there it is. And we'll have a contact form in here with a number of items. So we'll add this contact form in a little bit later. For the time being, I'll just put in contact form here. And we'll do contact form. And for that, we'll do a height of maybe 200 pixels with a background of RGBA and we'll do a white color with a 0.1 opacity. So that's that over here. 
maybe 300 pixels. So we'll also need to add a little bit of a margin there of about 50 pixels to the top. And maybe 50 pixels to the bottom with a spacer. Let's copy over the spacer that we created earlier, which is somewhere over here. There it is. And let's copy this down here below into the footer just under the contact form. Let's find our spacer and let's actually pull this out and put it at the root level again. Let's apply that and see what it looks like. So that's looking good. Uh, we need to make sure that the height for our footer is a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on there. But so far, so good. Next up, we've got a follow us on social media, which is using a H3 tag again. So let's do that in here. And what else do we have? We also have a couple of social icons on here. So those should be pretty easy to do. Let's just do a text center div here. We don't actually even need to text center. We'll just do a div with an FA tag, or an A tag to start off with. And this A tag will have an i.fa.fa-facebook. So there's our Facebook link. What we'll need to do is for the links, we'll need to have a color of white. Uh, if we have a look at these two links, we've got Facebook and Instagram. So let's add one more here for Instagram. There we go. And I think these have a O at the end of them. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening there. Let me just double check the designs on Font Awesome. So let's do Facebook on here. Ah, so we need to have a dash square at the end. So let's do that dash square and dash square. So the Instagram one, let's try that Instagram. All right, so that doesn't need a dash square. So there they are. Um, finally, we'll also have to make sure they're a bit bigger. So we'll do a font size of 48 pixels, I think they are. 42 actually, so let's do that. Great, so there they are. They also need some margins. So maybe we'll do some margins on the A tag there. So let's call these social links. So we'll do class social link. And let's copy that across to the bottom one as well. And in here, let's add that class in. Then we can do all our styling here below. And for each social link, we'll do a margin left of maybe five pixels and a margin right of five pixels. So that's looking a little bit better. Let's put this FA tag here. And these are already A tags, so we don't need to do that anymore. There we go. Uh, and if we have a look, we also don't want them to have a underline when we hover over. So we'll do and hover, text decoration, to none. Finally, we've got an Instagram link here with a couple of things. So we can add this in last and we'll finally just add in the copyright here. So let's put that in at the very bottom of our footer and we'll do that over here and we'll call this copyright. And this has a really small font size. So this is a font size of 18 with a light color. So let's put that in now. Uh, we'll do down here, we'll add copyright as a CSS class, uh, font weight of 200. Let's have a look at our design. So that's looking good. It just needs a bit of a margin at the top there of about 50 pixels. And I think we need the same for our social links and the Instagram section. So let's do Instagram holder. And for this Instagram holder, for the time being, similar to the contact form, we'll add some margins and height so that we have a visual representation of it. So there it is. And we can remove the height now from the footer. Finally, we can add some padding at the bottom of our footer. And that's more or less done. Uh, so our footer is looking good there. It's, uh, I think this section here has to 
have a little bit more going on. I'm not sure. It feels like I'm missing something. Let's have a look. Contact form, the line, follow us. It's got a little bit too much padding there, I think, but that's okay. We can fix that up. And this section here. Great. So we're more or less done with our design now, but what we'll need to do next is make sure that it works on all sizes of our devices. So that's mobile design, tablet design and whatnot. So let's take a look at doing responsive design now. So let's start by having a look at the responsive design for the header here. Now, if we resize this, then we can see that on a large size, it looks fine. But as we shrink smaller and smaller, we can see that essentially this is starting to lose its effect. Um, it's around the tablet size that it collapses, but uh, the column design there isn't exactly what we want it to be. So let's have a look at how we can fix that up to start off with. So let's go to the section here at the very top for the header. And let's have a look at how we can make that a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these columns here. And we're going to have a look at the logo as well. Now for the logo, we'll probably want that to be the very first item here. So we'll need to do some responsive design rearranging of the order of these items. And to do that, we're going to use the bootstrap system to arrange the order when we shall collapse the responsive design. So what we'll do is in this section here for the colas, we'll do order dash MD dash two. And then for the map, we'll do order dash MD dash three. And for the logo, we'll do order dash MD dash one. So that'll make our logo the first item call and map will be second. Now for call and map, they probably don't need line breaks. So what we could do is we could do call dash MD dash six, and that'll make it a six column design on the MD version. So that should work quite well. So now we've got this one here, which should be full width. Oh, sorry. Let's move this up above. So there we've got the logo, which is the full width and the two sections there for the phone and the map are six column designs. Now, the other thing we'll need to do is update the sizing for the logo there because it's a little bit too big. So what we'll do is here for the logo, uh, we'll just update the image here by doing image and then add media max width 992 pixels. We'll do a width of maybe 50%. So if we apply that and have a look, that's looking a little bit better. We'll also need a margin bottom of maybe 50 pixels. So that looks much better now. Let's resize that and see how it looks. So uh, that's looking fine, but the order is also applying on all of the sections, not just when we want it. So we'll have to have a look at fixing that up. Let's remove this order for the time being and just making sure that's all good. Yep, so that's all fine. Let's put this order back in. And what we'll do is we'll do a dash dash. I think that should make it work only when it's going down an element size. So let's, there we go. So this responsive design here is not taking effect for our order. Let's see how else we can design this to take effect. So to fix this up, what we'll need to do is we'll need to define a default order and then change that on the fly. So here we'll do order and we'll do this as one. This will be two and this will be three. Great. So let's refresh that. So that's one, two and three. And then when we move into the MD version, then we'll need to change that. Uh, and when we're here, so we'll do order MD two and order MD three. So that should now take effect. So that's still not working. Um, let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Maybe if we do LG for that. Uh, so let's do LG here 
and LG and LG. Great. So let's save that, refresh it. So on full size and then on small size. So now I think the only other thing we need to do is change the order here to uh, two and this to one, this to uh, two, this to one, and this from three. Oh, this is always three, so we can leave that as is. Beautiful. So we'll refresh that, and now that's working much better. So that's how we want it to work. Uh, so for the tablet version, we've got two columns, and then finally for the laptop version, we've got a single column for all of them. Great, that wasn't hard at all. <laughs> Let's make sure that our spacing is working correctly for this. So on this tablet version, the spacing is just about right, but when we move into a mobile version, there's no spacing here between these columns. So we'll want to add that in. So let's jump over here. And what we'll do is for each one of these, we'll add it in as a clickable button by adding an A tag in here. Let's add this in as well here. And finally here for the image too. Great. Now these are losing their color. So what we'll do is we'll add an A tag in here with a white color. Now for each one of these, uh, for the image, we'll just set that to the root path. Uh, we'll add these in later, but for the phone number, we can add that in now, which is just a tell. Let's paste that in here and add it. And these ones here also are clickable um, navigation. So maybe we'll just do this as nav item or maybe something different such as um, clickable. So let's copy this class in here and in here as well. And in this section, we'll do and clickable and we'll add a margin to the top when the responsive design is at a medium width. So let's do that here. And we'll do a margin bottom of maybe 15 pixels. So that should take effect. Let's double check the styling on that. So there we go, there we go. I'm not sure if that's taking effect just yet. Let's double check, make sure that is. It seems we haven't got the A tags taking effect in here yet. I'm not too sure why. This one is fine. This one is fine. Uh, what's happening here? Yeah, so there is a margin bottom, but because it's not a div, it's not working. So we'll do display block here. That should fix it up. So that's working a little bit better now. Um, what we could do now is have a look at it over here. So that's collapsing really well. Uh, next, when we get to an even smaller size, we want the image to be a little bit bigger again. So we'll do this at maybe 66%, maybe 75%. And we'll do this on maybe seven, six, eight pixels. Great, let's save that. So that's looking a little bit better. And finally, let's change this font and image here. So this font here needs to get a little bit smaller as we go smaller in the design. So this is our title font. So what we'll do is media max width here, 992 pixels. And for now, let's do a font size of 48 pixels when we make it smaller. So let's see if that gets smaller. Yep, so that's a little bit better. Let's also have a look. Uh, over here uh, and make sure it's working okay so we'll zoom in a little bit let's collapse this down I might actually start that earlier off at 1 200 pixels and let's change the padding as well maybe we'll make the padding something like 40 pixels and 40 pixels and then when we get to a smaller size here We'll do this as 30 pixels and 30 pixels. And this is 36 pixels in font size. So let's resize that. 
and that's looking a little bit better. Now I could probably do the same for the icons there as well. So for the icons, let's go to the A tag here. And actually we have them in here. So let's do that. We'll do a font size of 60 pixels and then maybe 50 pixels. So let's apply that and see how that looks. So here it's getting a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller again. So it seems maybe 992 pixels and 768 pixels for that, for it to work really well. Great, and finally, maybe the text for these can get a little bit smaller when we get to a smaller font size too. So we can do this here in the A tag. Uh, let's do a font size of 18 pixels and maybe a font size of 16 pixels. Let's refresh that and have a look. So that's not applying in this section, that is in a different section here under phone. There we go. So that looks good now. Uh, that's pretty responsive. I'm pretty happy with that. We might not even have to have um, the column design collapse so early. So we might just leave this as a, a SM, for example. Where's that? That's up here. Let's do that as SM. Great. So that looks good. Um, let's do the image down here below because this isn't really working very well at all. Um, if we take a look at this image and see what's happening, it's essentially um, only 50% width. And that's because it's taking this attribute over here that we need for the logo. So for the logo, let's add a class in here called logo. And let's apply this down here. So that way the bottom section stays the same. So that's working a little bit better now. Um, and we'll have to resize this icon here for the mouse. So let's do that here on the section for the mouse, which is, where is that? Uh, we've moved that here for the overlay image. So what we want to do is we want to add this responsive design to change the image here. Um, let's double check. Here it is, image. And what we want to do is we want to do a width of maybe 50%. So let's refresh that and see how that looks. So that's okay, maybe 33, 33 pixels. And that's not even taking effect. Uh, I wonder why that is. Let's have a look. So that'll be because this is the image itself. So we don't need this tag in here. Well, let's remove that and resize. There it is. It's tiny. You probably can't even see it, but let's do 200 pixels. Still probably too big. Let's do 150 pixels. So that's a little bit better. And let's resize this as we go down. 768 pixels can be 125. Great. So that's just about right. Finally, we'll need to fix up the margin at the bottom there. Uh, so that's here where it's a negative margin. So maybe we'll do that to 15 pixels and then maybe 10 pixels at the very end there. Great, so let's scroll up here, have a look. So that's expanding and shrinking down perfectly now. So I'm pretty happy with the header for the responsive design there. We can start having a look at the next section here for something for everyone. So let's see what's happening here for this section here. We created this more or less as a custom section using flex. And in order for that to be responsive, we're gonna do a little bit more work. So. For this section here, what we'll do is at media max width 992 pixels, we'll do a flex direction, or we'll do a flex wrap maybe, or, or maybe we'll do, uh, let's have a look. Let's do a flex direction of column. And let's make this a little bit smaller so we can see what that looks like. So that's over here like that. Now it's probably a little bit early to do that. We could probably do that on a smaller responsive design or we could do um, two sections back to back. 
So in order to do that, maybe we'll have a look at uh, hiding this icon here when we get to that um, responsive design. So we'll do, let's see, maybe we'll do something like uh, hide under MD. And in here, we'll just do this display none. So we, we make that one disappear. Next, maybe we won't do a uh, column design. We'll only actually get it to wrap uh, after the second item. So in order for us to be able to do that, we'll have to make sure that we create an element in here that actually breaks the line. So let's remove this for the time being. And in here, what we can do is create another section called uh, break line MD. And this won't exist until it gets to that responsive design. And what we'll do is when we do get it to exist, we'll actually make it a width of 100%. So that way it breaks the line for all the other items. So let's do display block width 100%. And here we'll do flex wrap is wrap. Great. So by doing that, we have got two columns there now and we can have both of our sections there and that should fit in more or less, doesn't matter which responsive version you're on. And that works really well now. We could probably make the font size a little bit smaller. So we can do that here by pulling in this media query. And for this item here, we'll just make that a font size of maybe 24 pixels. So that's looking a little bit better now. Next, this section here. So this is way too big for when we're getting to our next level of items. This is a H2 tag that we moved across before. So let's find this H2 tag. Uh, that's over here. And what we'll do with this one is when we get to a smaller size, we'll change this to 36 pixels. And when we get even smaller again, we'll change this to maybe 24 pixels or maybe 30 pixels because 24 isn't enough. Next, we've got a lot of padding happening there. So let's see if we can fix up the padding. Um, so in this section, let's have a look. We've got the item, the call to action and the P tag here, which is providing some of the padding and the spacer, which is providing some of the other padding. So for this P tag, let's create less padding here. We'll do maybe 35 pixels, maybe 40 pixels and then 30 pixels. So let's do that here, apply that. 30 pixels and 30 pixels and 40 pixels and 40 pixels. So that's a bit better. Um, and this button we're gonna have to resize a little bit later as well. Uh, and where's that spacer? Because we've got a little bit of padding happening happening there on that spacer too. So we'll do at media max width 992 pixels. And we'll do a margin top of 40 pixels and then a margin top of 30 pixels on 768 pixels. Great. So that's looking a little bit better. Um, let's refresh that. Let's see what's happening here because there's a little bit more padding happening at the bottom there. Uh, and that's margin bottom. So that's why we've not had that work properly. So that's that's looking good now. Now let's fix up this button, which isn't resizing properly. Let's take a look at where it is. So it should be big button. Uh, here we'll do it at media max with one 200 pixels. And what we'll do is first we'll change this font size to maybe 42 pixels. Then the next size down, which is 992. We'll do maybe 36 pixels. So let's double check that resizes. So that's still a little bit big in terms of the um, padding and the border. So for that, 
let's change that too. Uh, maybe we'll do 0 0.5 and 1.25. And for the border, maybe we'll do six pixels. So that's a little bit better. Um, still not fitting in there. So maybe a font size of 30. So that's much better now. And if we keep resizing this down even more uh, for seven, six, eight pixels, maybe we want something like 24. So that looks all right. Let's make sure that uh, this goes down maybe to four pixels for the border. Uh, and let's let's check how that resizes. So that's resizing really well. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, finally, maybe for a mobile version, um, we'll have a look at that a little bit later. But uh, we also have a little bit of a uh, too large margin here at the bottom. So let's finally fix that up. So that's at the top here, I think. Let's let's take a look. Uh, this is under um, Info Home. So that's over here. And here we've got a padding of 100 at the bottom. So maybe for 992, we'll change that to 50. And maybe so 60. And maybe here we'll just do 30. So that's looking a little bit better. Maybe 50 and 75. So let's apply that, resize and have a look. So that seems to be very responsive now. I'm pretty happy with that. Finally, we can take a look at maybe this host section there. But before we do, let's take a look at the mobile version. So I'm just going to enable a responsive iPhone 7, 8, 9. So that's the hello there. It's got the image. It's got the sections there. The button there looks okay. I'm pretty happy with that. And we can just look, take a look at these next sections now. Now, I also think these spacers or borders should get a little bit smaller with the responsive design. They're currently 10 pixels, I think, but that's probably too much. So, oh, they're 20 pixels, sorry. So let's make these maybe 10 pixels or 15 pixels and then 10 pixels. And I think that should work a lot better. There we go. So now when we resize that, that's looking a little bit better. And we can do that for the other ones as well. So if we go down here to uh, this section, uh, where is that located? That's the uh, home functions section. So let's collapse this one. Here it is. So that should be starting off at 20 pixels, 15 and then 10. Let's resize that and see how that looks. And this is border top. So we'll save that. Let's move it across. Yep. Yep. So that's looking good. Uh, finally, let's also make sure this big button is properly responding as well. So here we're doing a transform, but we're also going to have to do a margin top of negative 10 pixels to align for the border size there. But we're also going to make sure that we change that as we go down in size. So here we'll maybe do five pixels and here we'll do zero pixels. Great. So let's double check that that's working and that looks like it is. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, finally, let's do this section here for the functions. So for the functions section, uh, what we need to do is have a look at the sizing of the fonts and the padding for each section here. So for the sizing on the fonts, let's make them a little bit smaller as we get down in our responsive design. Maybe we'll do a font size of 24 pixels here. And let's refresh that and have a look. So that's a little bit better. Um, the padding at the top and the bottom could probably stay the same for the time being until now that, that looks just fine, actually. Uh, then we've got the content here. Oh, sorry, I've been changing the footer there. That's the wrong section. So here's the function section. I've got the big button. Uh, here's the tagline. So maybe that'll go to 
22 pixels and then add 768 we'll do that as 18 pixels for the h2 tag maybe what we do is have less of a margin at the bottom on 992 and for these sections here for the p tags we can actually define this wherever we've defined our body so that's where we've done it here and we can change this to a font size 16 when we get to a smaller version so that looks much better um, let's double check the tagline there it seems to have lost some of its margin at the bottom so here maybe we'll do a margin bottom 15 pixels great so that's looking good um, for some reason that tagline surely it used to have 50 pixels there so something went odd let's double check the design so that's about 25 pixels and then we'll do 15 pixels great so that's looking much better let's pull up our uh, let's close this off let's have a look at our design here let's make sure this responsive section is working correctly so that's working really well and the image is already designed to be responsive based on our previous elements and now we can just focus on the footer now if we take a look at the footer the way we designed it previously already works for responsive design so we don't have to do anything extra there and this is more or less our website done now uh, we can make sure that we remove the padding there at the bottom and we can start putting this into wordpress or something else now to add these uh, sections here for the contact form and instagram and whatnot so this next section might not be for everyone because what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually get this template design up running on a wordpress website and we're gonna to have to do a number of steps to get that done. Uh, and I'm gonna use a site builder called Understrap. So I'll show you more or less how I import this design into WordPress. And that way it gives you an idea of what it's like if you're building your own template. Now to start off with, I'm gonna open up my own website and create a directory for it. So I'm gonna have a look at doing that over by creating a new folder path and then just installing WordPress on there and creating a theme. So here I've got an empty folder and the first thing I'll do is I'll create a www directory. Then what I'll do is I'll go and find WordPress and download the latest version of it. So that way we can make sure that we're always using the most up-to-date version. And I'll also install Understrap, which is the theme builder that I personally like to use for building any themes on WordPress. So I'm just going to go over here and select Download Zip. With these two downloading in the background, I'm just going to wait for them to finish and we're going to put them straight into this directory. We're also going to make sure that we have a database for it to install. I'm going to go to local host forward slash php my admin and in here we'll just log in and create a new database called hello with that done uh, we'll also have to add in an ip address for it and i'm gonna add this in as a uh, in my host file and that's where i normally save all my ip addresses i'm just going to create a directory in here for my host files Then I'll just add the name of the website's domain, which in this case, it'll just be hollow.localhost. So to do that, I'll just do 127.0.0.1 hollow.localhost. We'll save that and we'll put that into our host folder. And that way that should take effect. I'm also using uh, WAMP for my web server so I'll need to add this in as a vhost I'm just gonna scroll in here and just copy the last virtual path I had and call this hello I'll pass in the path that I'm using so in this case it's just uh, back over here for the ww directory and we'll put this in here for the document directory 
With that, I'll just restart my WAMP server and that should take effect. Next, we can open up WordPress and we can paste it in here. So let's open up this zip file here and we'll drag and drop all the files in there and this will get it ready for our WordPress installation, uh, which we've already created a database for. So all we really need to do is just wait for this to finish up. So that's done. Uh, we'll just jump in here to our themes folder and we'll create a hello dash theme. And for this theme here, what we'll do is we'll grab understrap and we'll paste that in. And that'll be the building blocks for our theme. So let's copy the whole thing in here. With that done, we can now browse to hollow.localhost and see if that loads up. So it has, we'll get started with a basic installation. So for this, the username is hello and everything else is default and we'll just run the installation. For the website name, we'll just call this hello. And for the password, we'll just keep it something generic and I'll probably change this later. Great, so that's more or less done. Let's kick this off and we'll install our theme in a second. So we can now log into our website and let's just copy paste the username and password in there. And there we're in. Now what we can do is we can go to the appearance and the themes. We can see here we've got our understrap theme, but we we'll want to change the name and label for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up in VS Code with this directory in mind. And we're going to take a look at what's required to rename the theme. Over here, I'm just going to call this hello theme. And the rest I'm going to keep more or less the same. And this section here for the screenshot, I'm going to open this up in Photoshop and replace it with a screenshot of the website so that it's a good visual representation of the theme. So here's Photoshop and what I'll do is I'll just jump in here and I'll just take a generic screenshot of the website and we'll paste that into our Photoshop file. Uh, let's screen capture this here and let's paste it in and resize it so that it takes up the screen properly. Uh, here it is. Perfect. So let's uh, save that and we'll save that straight into the same directory as our theme. Uh, let's see where that is. And that's just over here and we'll replace the old image with the new one here. Great. So with that done, if we jump back to the website now and go to the theme itself and refresh, we'll see that we've got the hollow theme there and we can apply that to our website. If we do that, we won't get any changes yet. It'll still be a generic WordPress website. But what we can start doing now is we can copy over the code we've done into this theme builder and we can get it up and running. So let's start with that. What we'll need to do is with the theme, we'll need to run npm install because this has things that allow us to do CSS and SAS and it's got gout that essentially runs in the background to compress everything as well. While that's happening in the background, we'll jump into our themes folder over here and we'll copy our styling that we created earlier and we'll paste it down here. Next, we'll jump in here for our HTML and this is more or less Pretty standard. What we'll need to do though is we'll need to copy over the custom font and edit our header file here. So here's our header file and we'll paste our font in here at the top. Next we'll want to create this copy of the content for our main page and we'll do everything besides the footer. So let's copy all these sections and we'll create a new page template. We'll call it template-home.php and in here we'll paste in all this content. We'll use the full width page content that we have for another template and we'll paste it at the top and at the bottom. So let's do that here and we'll remove some of these other tags. We'll rename this template to template-home and we'll also add in the footer here as well for PHP WordPress. With that done, and with our modules installed, we'll run gulp watch and then we'll save our CSS here 
And we'll do that by just hitting Control S to save it, and that'll minify and apply to our project. What we can do next is we can go to the directory here, and we'll create a new page. And this page here, we'll just call the home page. We'll publish that immediately, and we'll also apply the theme that we created, which is template-home. And then we'll go to the settings, and here in the settings for, I think it's reading, we'll click to create a static page of the home for the website. Now, if we go to the home page, we're almost there. We've got our CSS applying. The only thing we're doing is missing our headers and a couple of other things. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to jump in here for the header and we'll need to remove some of this content that it currently has in there. So all of this stuff here, we don't really need. So I'm going to remove essentially all of it. There, it's gone. And now if we refresh, that header section is gone. And then for the footer, we had a custom one here. So we can copy that across as well. Let's copy that into the footer for WordPress, which is down here in footer.php. And what we'll do is we'll remove all this syntax besides this wrapper. So let's remove all of this. And let's paste this down here below. Great. And finally, we'll need to create a directory for our images. So let's do that now. We'll create a directory called image. And in here, we'll paste all the images that we were using previously. And they're here in brackets. So let's open these up. And then we'll just browse to their directory and copy them all across. So here they are. And I'm just going to paste them straight into the image directory over here. Great. And for our CSS, those references to the image are not labeled properly. So we need to update their path. And I think it's just like that. So for any backslashes, we'll do a find and replace. And that should take care of all of them. Let's double check. That's correct, that's not correct. And that's correct. Let's save that and check our website to see if it's reloading properly. So that's almost there. We just need to pull in the images on the website itself. So let's go to our home page there from the template we had. Let's scroll to the top here and let's make sure these are referenced properly. So for this, we need to get the path for this theme. And to do that, we have to use the WordPress extension, get template directory URL, and then just pass in image uh, forward slash image. So let's do that for all our images that we currently have. Uh, so there's one here, there's one here. Essentially, we could probably do a find and replace on any image that has that path and replace it with a forward slash image with that syntax. Let's apply that and that should be more or less all of them done. Let's refresh and double check. Great. So there's our website. There are all the images. And finally, there's our footer. So that's looking really good. We've got some padding there on the bottom of our footer and that's because of the wrapper. So we'll need to remove that syntax in our CSS. So I'll just do that here. Uh, I think that's a padding padding top zero pixels and padding bottom zero pixels. Great. So let's refresh that and that's fixed up. So now that we have this website in WordPress, we can now add a contact form. So let's do that. To add a contact form, we'll just jump in here and we'll install the contact form extension. So we'll type in contact form here for plugins. And in here, we'll just get contact form seven. We'll install and activate that plugin and we'll just create a very simple contact form. If we have a look at the design over here, it's a two column contact form with a submit button. So that's what we'll design. With that installed, let's activate that and jump in there and create it. Now it's got phone number, email address, name and message. So I think that's all the defaults that normally comes with a contact form. 
let's jump in here and do that. So here's the contact form. Here's the base one, and we'll just call this contact. In here, let's update the syntax. We'll do a div with a class of row. And for this class, we'll have two columns. For the first column, we'll do div class call LG6, so a six column design. And for this first six column design, we'll wanna add uh, name, phone, and email address. So here we've got name, we've got email address, and we'll also add phone, which will be tell, and we'll do your phone. Great. So that looks good. Um, I'm just gonna put them all in the same line so that they work nicely. And for the second one, we'll want to do a text area. Uh, so here's a text area that we already have and the submit button. So I'll put that in there as well. The rest we can remove. So that's a nice and easy contact form. We'll click save on that. And to put this into our code, all we have to do is scroll down here to the contact form section, which is, uh, where's that? Let's have a look. In the footer here. So let's paste that in. And to use this in WordPress, we'll have to use the PHP syntax, um, echo do underscore short code. And in here, we'll just do the generic uh, syntax that we got for the short code and print that out. So if we go back to the website now and take a look at it and scroll down here, we should see our contact form, though it's not looking very good right now. So we'll have to style it a little bit. The first thing we wanna do is add placeholder text for each one of these. So the way we do this in WordPress is to go here to our contact form, and just type in placeholder and go your name. We can copy over this syntax to the other one. So this one, for example, could be uh, your phone. And this one here can be your email. For your message, you can have your message. And we'll change this from send to submit. Let's save that and we should see those changes apply. If we go here to our website and refresh, we can see those are now in there. Now let's take a look at the design. So this has a font size of 18 pixels with a nice border radius and a lot of padding. So we can now update this essentially in our new CSS here. And what we'll do is we'll go to our contact form and here we'll do input and text area and we'll do a border of none. We'll do a background of white. We'll do a border radius of maybe 0 0.25 EM and a padding of maybe 0 0.75 EM. We'll also make sure that the font size is 18 pixels. Let's check that styling out. So that's looking a little bit better, but it's gonna need a little bit more padding. So maybe 1 EM and 1.5 EM. And it's also gonna need a little bit more border radius. So maybe almost 7.5. Let's refresh that, check again, and that's looking a lot better now. We'll also need a couple of margins and more padding at the top and bottom. So let's do that here. We'll do 1.5 for the top and bottom, and we'll do margin bottom 0.5 EM. Let's refresh and take a look, and that's starting to look a lot closer to our design. Uh, we we'll probably need a little bit more space for the width, because it seems to have a max width applied. So to change that, we're gonna just jump in here to the contact form section, and maybe do this to 1024 pixels as the max width for the contact form. So if we refresh that, that has a lot more space now and a lot more room to breathe. But the your message section essentially has a little bit too many lines there, so we can reduce those. To do that, we just go over here and maybe do something like X4, which will make sure that it only has four columns to use. So that looks a little bit better. Uh, we could probably add a little bit more spacing in between each section, because these ones have about actually 15 pixels. So let's jump into our CSS and just jump in here for margin bottom. We'll do one EM and that should be about the same. So let's refresh that and that's looking a lot better now. 
Uh, finally, for this submit button, we'll need to change how it's designed. Currently, it's got this nice dark blue color. So let's copy over this syntax. And then over here, we'll do it and type is submit. And we'll do background is this color with the dark blue. Text color is white. And on hover, maybe we'll do something like uh, color remains white but maybe the background goes to a different background, maybe something like a darker version of that hex value of maybe 15%. Let's apply that, see how it looks. So we'll refresh the page and that's looking a little bit better, but um, the submit section there doesn't seem to be aligning properly. So let's fix that. We should be able to fix that by making the height auto and overriding the manual padding that's been set on it by having it set here. So that should fix it up. Let's refresh and try that now. Uh, so that's looking okay, except it's a little bit too big. So let's maybe make that 0.5 EM for the height. Let's refresh one more time and that's looking good now. So that's our contact form. We probably don't need the background on it anymore. So I'll remove that and remove the height. And once we refresh that, we can have a look next at the social media for Instagram. For that, what we'll do is we'll jump in here and go to plugins and type in Instagram. And let's see what uh, Instagram and see what plugins we have available. Uh, personally, I like the one by Smash Balloon and let's see where that one is. So this might be this one here. Uh, let's double check what that is. So that looks like the one we're after. Let's install this one and apply it to our website. Once that's installed, we'll need to link it to the actual feed from Instagram. So I'm going to have to pull that out. So it seems we might not be able to add in the uh, Instagram section, but what we can do is start looking at adding some nice animations to the website. So to do that, we just need to use a package called animate CSS. Uh, that's located here if you guys haven't used it before and it's got lots of little cool animation effects. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this added in here as a CSS file called animate.min.css and I'm going to start applying it all over the place. So to start off with when our page loads, which is just over here, I want the logo to zoom in and maybe these two items to fade in from the left and the right. So let's do that. Here's the logo. And here we've got a class called logo. So what we'll do is we'll do zoom in as our first effect. So if we refresh, we can see that it's zooming in. That's cool. Uh, for these two sections on the left, so we can close this off now. Uh, for the left one here, we'll fade this in from the left. So we'll do, whoa, fade in left. And for the right one, we'll do fade in from the right. Let's check out how that looks. So that's looking all right. And then this one here, I want that to fade in from the bottom. And let's do that over here. We'll do we'll fade in up. So that's looking good. And finally, we've got this one here. And I also want that to fade in from the bottom. So we'll do we'll fade, fade in up. Let's refresh that and have a look. So that's looking good. I'm pretty happy with that, though I don't want it to go over this section here. So what I'll do is for the home header, I'll jump here into the SAS and I'll find it here. And what I'll do is I'll do an overflow and I'll make it hidden. So that way it doesn't essentially go over the section. So now we've got this nice animation and that's looking good for the home page. Let's have a look at the next section. So here we've got social, drinks, food, and sunset. And let's animate these sections in. What we'll do is we'll jump in here and we'll go to the section. Let's make the text a little bit smaller. And for each one of these, we'll do whoa, zoom, or maybe bounce in. Bounce in. So let's add this to each one of the items. and save that. So now they sort of 
bounce in, but there's no delay in between each one. So we can add that in. We'll do data, whoa, delay of 0 0.1 seconds here. And then we'll do maybe 0 0.2 seconds here and 0 0.3 seconds here. So now when we refresh, they sort of bounce in one by one. We probably could add a bounce on these sections here as well, or maybe a fade in. So let's go here and increase this to um, two, four, and six, and then add in one over here for this image icon. And we'll do that as one, and one over here for this image. Do that as three, and then one over here, and do that as five. Let's refresh. And that's looking much better now. It's got a nice sort of a bounce and it's going from the left to the right. Next, we'll do something here for the line and the big text. So over here for the spacer, let's do this as well. Zoom in and take a look at how that works. So that's all right. And then for this section here, and for this text, we'll do, we'll have to add class and we'll do whoa fade in maybe down let's try that so that looks good um, and then for this text here uh, maybe just fade in without any animation adding too much animation sometimes isn't a good idea so we'll put that in and that looks good so I'm pretty happy with that so far we'll do one here for the button and for that I think we'll just zoom it in slowly so here's the button, we'll do whoa, zoom in, and let's just apply that and have a look. So that's okay. Um, and then let's do this section over here. So for this, for the H2 class, we'll do whoa, fade in, down. Here we'll do whoa, fade in, up. Let's refresh and have a look. So that looks okay. And the rest of the sections can just be regular fade-ins maybe. So let's do that. For each P tag, we'll just do fade in, fade in, and fade in. Finally, for this one, we'll do whoa, fade, fade in, down. And let's refresh that. So that looks okay. That doesn't seem to be working very well, so. What I might do is just add uh, for them to be fade in up for all of them. So let's do that. Sorry, fade in, yeah, fade in up, fade in up, fade in up, and fade in up. Let's save that and refresh. That looks better. Let's take a look at this image here. So I think we'll just use the same animation we did previously on the image. So that was over here somewhere. Where was that? Uh, here we go, uh, fade in up. So let's apply that over here. But uh, what we might do is we'll also have to make sure that home function has a overflow of hidden as well. So let's go over here, we'll do uh, overflow hidden. And let's apply that and refresh. That's looking good. We we'll probably don't need this scroll item in there. So let's remove that. Let's go over here, double check the design. Oh, actually no, the design does have it. So we'll leave it in. And finally, we've got the contact form. So for that one, it's in the footer. So let's jump here into the footer. Here it is. And let's add some simple animation for that. So let's do fade in up. And let's refresh. So that's okay. And for the actual contact form, we'll do well, fade in, down. Let's try that. So that's not exactly right. Let's just do fade in, data whoa, duration of maybe one second and refresh that. So that's a little bit better. And finally, let's do the line and the social media here. So over here on social media, let's do the same fade in up. And for the social links, let's do whoa, bounce in and 
And in here, let's copy that down as well. Let's refresh and just have a look. So that's going to be bounds in and bounds in. And we'll do a data whoa delay of 0 0.1 seconds on that one. Let's refresh and take a look. So that bouncing doesn't seem to be happening. I'm not sure why. Uh, let's try zoom in and see if that takes effect. We'll refresh, reapply. Uh, maybe I'm not doing it on the right elements here. Uh, so follow us on social media. So that's working fine. Uh, we've got the line spacer here. So let's do zoom in on that as well. So that's looking good. And then for these, I might just do them on the actual item itself. So let's do that over here and over here. And let's move this data delay below. So that's working now. And finally, we have this section here for the Instagram. But what I'll do is I'll leave that for the time being. I'll just do that as a fade in. And we'll have a look at that a little bit later. So now we've got animation everywhere, except this section here, because we've added the overflow hidden, it's actually causing our button not to work properly. So we're going to have to remove that and change up how that works. So let's remove that over here. And then for the image holder, I'm just going to do an overflow hidden there. So that should be okay. We might just have to do a different animation for that one. So let's go to our home page and go here to that image. And for that image, what we might do is we might just do a fade in. And let's refresh and see how that looks. So that's not taking effect quite yet because we've done that on the header element. So that's the wrong one. Let's scroll down here. Here it is, fade in. There we go. All right, so that's all done now. Um, I'm going to put this up online and that way you guys can take a look and I might share the code as well if you guys are interested. I hope this was a good experience to see what it's like developing a design from just a mock-up in Adobe XD. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more like it, hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.